Hi, welcome to sunny Prague. I'm Andrzej Peshot and I'm an NC State graduate with a doctoral degree in educational psychology. Today we're standing in front of the NC State European Center in Prague. NC State Prague was founded in 2005. Since then, more than 2,000 NC State students came here to study abroad. I'm the instructor of ADP 304, Educational Psychology, and ADP 370, Child Development. Those are GDP courses offered by NC State Prague. Today, I would like to tell you something about the Czech educational system. So, where is the Czech Republic? The Czech Republic is a landlocked country it's located in Central Europe, right between Germany, Poland, Slovakia and Austria. Its country area compares to the, to the size of South Carolina and its population count is very close to North Carolina. But the population of the Czech Republic is way less diverse than in the US. Most of its citizens are Czech. And the official language is Czech. It sounds like this. Mluvím česky, ale vy mi vůbec nerozumíte, takže můžu říkat, co chci. It sounds crazy, right? Czech education is divided into four stages as showcased in the presented graphic, which roughly corresponds to K-12 to college US system. At the first stage that you can see at the bottom is kindergarten, so-called školka. Školkas are not compulsory, but approximately 350,000 children attend those schools every year. There are public and private školkas. The public ones are for free, whereas the private ones are quite expensive. Some popular private školkas follow the Montessori methods and some školkas are so-called forest schools. The concept of forest schools came from Scandinavia that supports play, exploration and risk-taking natural settings. The second level of schooling, as you can see above the školkas, uh, combines elementary and middle school grades and also the ninth grade. We call them základní škola or základka. All Czech children are required by law to attend základkas for nine years in order to complete their elementary education. Approximately one million children all over the country attend základkas. Most of them are public and children attend them for free, but there are also a few paid options such as church and private základkas. After completing their nine years compulsory education, moving up, students can decide to enter the third level of schooling and study high school, or vocational schools. Among high schools, students have many options. The, com the most common are so-called gymnasiums, it's in the graphic on the left, that are the most competitive high schools and essentially help prepare students for their college education. Some children can enter gymnasium schools at the sixth grade already. Other high school options offer education specialized in certain fields such as engineering, trade and finances, nursing, pedagogy and others. Both gymnasiums and special focus high schools are usually completed within four years by passing maturita leaving the exam. It is like the students receive a high school diploma. The maturita exams are operated by the government and assess students' skills in math, Czech language, foreign language and other elective subjects. Vocational schools recently fell a bit out of fashion. However, these schools prepare students for important jobs such as mechanics, carp carpenters, plumber, hairdressers and many other practical professional skill work. Again, students have options to attend public, university, public universities that are free from tuition. All private universities and the tuition of private universities can vary from 300 US dollars to 4,500 US dollars per semester. In addition to universities, students can study BOS schools those are special focus colleges that provide an alternative college degree. I also tried to list the differences between the Czech and American schooling system. Here, the school year begins on the 1st September and ends on the 30th June for elementary and high schools in the system. So students are always excited about two their two months summer break. The school year is divided into two terms. At the, at the end of each term, students receive a grade report listing their grades for all their subjects. Students can actually receive five grade marks, ranging from one, the excellent result, to five, which stands for a failing the class. Students can take their first foreign language at the third grade and their second foreign language class at the eighth grade. All schools have to follow the national curriculum issued by the government. Most of the children attend public schools that are free, and have reasonable lunch prices supported by government funding. Public universities are also free from tuition. 
In fact, some of them provide some scholarships for students with special needs or to students who come from disadvantaged families. In the Czech Republic, there are usually no campuses like the one at NC State. Most of the largest universities, like the Charles or the Masaryk, are integrated within the city. Oh, and living in dorms is actually cheaper than living in the leased apartments. I lived in one of those when I was a student in Prague. Now let's hear the experience of Eliška, the Czech middle school teacher. Why did you decide to become a teacher? Uh, it was actually a pretty easy decision for me because any time when I'm thinking about my younger age, I remember that I spent almost any minutes with uh, kids or with people. So when I was thinking what I would love to do one day, uh, I just knew that I want to do something with people. And because I love uh, to see how people or kids are thinking about stuff and what they uh, are they thought so it was easy to uh, remember uh, to e it was easy to do this decision for me uh, what do you like about your job uh, I actually love uh, when all the kids are together in one classroom and you give them some topics and they do a discussion about that uh, I love the flow in the classroom and then you can see how the kids are thinking, how do they the connection, uh, how they react to each other, and so on. Uh, what is your usual day in school? Uh, I must say it's pretty hard for me to describe that. Um, usually my first class, uh, it starts at um, 8 a.m., but I prefer to come to school earlier uh, because I love to spend my alone time, just start to think about the topics, about the classes. And uh, like 30 minutes before every single class or 10 minutes before every single class, the assistant would come and ask me what I would love to do with kids. So um, I don't have so much free time between classes. We just run between the classrooms and um, you have just a few minutes for your own and that's it. So how, how long is the break between the lessons? Uh, usually it's like 10 minutes, but for real it's a few minutes because you run between the classrooms, uh, you need to go on the toilet, uh, you want to just grab some food or or drink, uh, and uh, you have to speak with kids about some rest, what they have. So, yeah, that's pretty hard. And last class, it's until 2 p.m., uh, but afterwards you have to prepare uh, another classes, or you have to mark and do evaluation and write to parents. Yeah, so it's hard actually. How often do you meet with your uh, with your colleagues, with other teachers? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Uh, it's based on how many grades uh, you have. So I'm a teacher in two grades. So I have two meetings in two weeks, I guess, every second week. Yeah. So yeah, we spend our free time on that meetings.